Um, here's another use of the buffer object, which we haven't looked at yet. Um, this one enables you to uh, make a wave shape of your own. Um, rather than using the um, cycle object, which by default has a sine wave in it, or a saw tilde object, which has a sawtooth wave in it, and so on, um, you can make your own wave shape. Um, as you will see from the, uh, the blurb on the right-hand side here, all of the oscillators that we've looked at um, work by reading a wavetable of 512 samples, um, and those contain the shape of one cycle of the waveform. So the, um, if I go to, um, let's go into here a minute. Here and uh, nope. Multiply here again. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. So each of our. Um, I keep using this, don't I? Each of our oscillators uses a wavetable containing 512 samples, and those samples trace the shape of the, uh, um, the, the waveform that you, you want or that each of those contain, essentially. Um, and, uh, and then they kind of interpolate between each of the samples as they read through them. So um, what we want to do um, is to make a buffer which enables us to put in 512 samples. And then... Um, using the wave, uh, the waveform object, waveform display object, we can then draw in um, a shape for the oscillator to read. So we will start by making an oscillator, and you notice that we actually return to the cycle object. The cycle object, as I say, by default will give you a sine wave, but you can tell it to read from a different, um, a different wavetable. Uh, and you do that by telling it a buffer to read from. So obviously in a minute we'll have to make a buffer for it to read from, but at the moment we will tell it to read the buffer my wave. And then you could put in another value that would give it a default um, uh, frequency. But for the moment we'll leave it like that. Um, and then as I say, I'll need to make a buffer which, has, which speaks to my wave. And that buffer needs to be, you remember we need to give it a size, and it needs to be um, approximately 512 samples long. And if you look over here again, <coughs> you'll see that 11.7 milliseconds gives you approximately uh, 512 samples. So remember that the duration of the buffer is always given in uh, milliseconds, and you have to work out um, how many samples that would be. But I've given you that value now, so we will pop that in <coughs> and if I make a waveform display object again uh, <coughs> I will set it to read from the um, my wave buffer and I will also give it a mode which I think when we looked at the modes for the waveform object I think I mentioned three um, which were move, select, and uh, loop. But there is a fourth, and that is draw. Um, and that allows us to draw stuff into the buffer. You wouldn't want most of the time to draw stuff in, um, but in this case, you do. So if I now click it to uh, set my wave, um, and click on mode draw you will notice the cursor becomes a crosshairs and I can start drawing into that space when I do that I can do any uh, draw in any shape I want double click on buffer and that shape is represented in the buffer so it's now stored in there and cycle should read from that so if I double click on here <coughs> we will we will get it um, coming up. Um, 
So I will uh, make an easy DAC object and I will make a gain oops, control so that we don't blow our eardrums. Connect that up and a frequency or at least a means of changing the frequency and turn that on whoops, sorry we've still got our original patch open apologies cycle is reading back through that wave shape and um, so it's not um, it's, it's a more complex wave shape than we've heretofore looked at um, and I can change the shape of this and um, well <laughs> it, it doesn't immediately update so if I change the shape of this which I can do nothing will happen although buff the buffer currently has, has recognize that I've changed the shape of the waveform. Cycle hasn't updated yet. To make cycle update we would need to send it a message that says um, set, oops, set my wave so tell it to set it back to my wave again and it updates the, um, uh, that shape. So I'll do that again. If I change this make it quite jaggedy nothing happens until I tell cycle to reread So, I mean, that, that could be, you could do uh, something perhaps more interesting than that if you were able to get Cycle to update as soon as you change the waveform. Um, and you can do that by, well, any of these really will um, output data when you change the waveform. So, I will simply connect a button to the Set My Wave, and that means that every time I change this, I'm going to update my wave shape within the Cycle object. Okay, um, you might have noticed uh, when I was giving you that uh, description then that uh, it wasn't going quite as I was uh, I was describing it, that the, uh, the right hand half of the table wasn't actually making any difference to the timbre of the sound at all. And that I realised afterwards be was because I, in the DSP status window, I had my sampling rate on 96 kilohertz. Um, which uh, meant that the 512 samples were not occupying the full 11.7 seconds of my buffer. They were occupying half of that. Um, so uh, I've remedied that now. Um, and in fact, uh, after that point, I realized that my um, ScreenFlow document had completely corrupted. Um, so I was just getting very strange bleeping sounds instead of my voice when I was trying to explain that to you. So I'm having to do this again anyway. Um, so, uh, yeah, there's not really much more to say, really, except that uh, this should now work. Um, so now, it, uh, wherever I am within that, um, within that buffer, I get uh, a change to the timbre. So you can make some quite complex sounds. And, of course, then you can run all of that straight through a... Um, a filter or something uh, and you'll get some uh, you know you, you, you could you could generate some interesting timbres through um, envelope envelopes of or, or changing frequencies of filtering of this does that make sense? I'm not sure that it does anyway ok Oh, and of course, you could then run the whole, you know, you could, you could uh, attach that or integrate that into um, another um, patch, so additive synthesis, any of the stuff we've looked at before, which I think I will do in a minute, actually, because it enables me to show you abstractions, which I'm quite keen to do, um, and how they work. So uh, I will do that for the next video.